Hey folks, Phil the Bee Man here. Time for some results. I've been uh, been through every hive once, and it's time to crunch the numbers and see what we got. We've had a really frustrating slow spring here in Manitoba. It's it's quite a nice day today. I'm still it's Easter Sunday, still wearing a hoodie. Winds you can probably hear the wind up a little bit. That really takes the warmth out of the sun. And uh, I think the bees have flown three or four short afternoons is about it since they came out five weeks ago. So it's been slow going, getting through everything. We've picked and chosen our moments uh, you know, when the wind is calm and the sun's uh, shining a little bit to try to get everything's had uh, apivar treatment and a pollen patty and uh, so let's get to the numbers. So first of all, uh, not super thrilled with, uh, with how things have gone, but I'm not horrified either. And as I've said before, if you're uh, someone who's had bad, bad luck, and I think it's fair to call it luck because we don't really know what's doing this. So, um, you know, it, it's pretty hard to hold someone, uh, even yourself, responsible for preventing things that we don't fully understand. Um, and I do sometimes hear beekeepers talk down about other beekeepers that have had bad luck. And boy, I, I don't have much patience for that because, uh, first of all, I've been there. I've had tough years. And uh, you don't need someone else piling on when you're already beating yourself up. And secondly, uh, we don't know, right? We got some hunches. Uh, I would, I'm putting my money on apivar resistance being a huge contributing factor, but I don't think it's just that because uh, mites alone, although they, they can wipe you out, uh, you know, the levels of mites people are telling me that they had don't correspond with the losses they had to that epic level. Anyway, overall, add up every hive, every nuke in the whole operation, I'm at 69% good and 8% weak. So right on about 75, 76%. So I can work with that. Um, you know, we, we're not, it's not going to be a growth year probably, but it'll be, uh, we'll get back to where we were. But now that's a benchmark. So 69 and 8, uh, normal and weak. People want to know about sort of the special uh, uh, stuff going on. So here are the, the hives I'm sitting on here are from the oxalic winter treatment experiment. And I didn't run that experiment. And I kind of was a, a you know, backseat driver a bit of it in the, in the sense that they would sometimes ask me what they should do with, you know, what days would work best for me and, you know, how, how to handle the bees in the shed or so on. And, and, and I shared my opinion, but oh, I wind blew, the, wind blew the camera away. Sorry about that. So anyway, how did they do? Where are they here? Uh, okay, out of 70 hives, uh, 44 of them were pretty good and 10 were weak and, and some of those were desperately weak. Uh, so that gives me a 62% and 14%. So slightly worse than my overall. So, uh, but what we also learned is that uh, we cured uh, some mites because uh, when you get losses in an experiment because you didn't treat for something, don't be surprised if they crop out. So what we saw was higher losses in the control colonies and control that was pretty effective on the stronger uh, levels of treatment. Uh, just working off of memory, the colonies that had 
the three strips of oxalic got about near basically nearly 98 percent control pretty much brought the level so we sampled the hives at the beginning of the trial sampled them at the end and the number of mites was went from significant to zero and of course in the untreated colonies uh the level of mites only dropped it did go down by like half a percent um but didn't drop significantly so we and then the uh two strip got about 80 percent control and the one strip got 60 percent control so uh that's pretty good the we had uh the design experiment included uh, both a positive and a negative control. So the positive control was uh, an apovar strip. Uh, I think, you know, the appropriate number of strips, uh, which also brought the level of mites down. So that's something useful to know. If you had, if you knew you were going in the winter with high mites, uh, you can also get control during the winter with the treatment. And then the sham treatment, which was, all the same handling, putting a strip in, but that the strip had nothing in it. Uh, those hives got really beat up and did not get mite control. So uh, I think the design of the study, very successful. I hope that when uh, the folks reporting on that get to your B meeting or, your, or do some online reports, that you can show them some support. They'll do, uh, there's a whole lot of sticky board counts and stuff to do that, that uh, I don't have the numbers on. This is what I've got so far. So the hive survived, effective treatment. I think there's something to work with there. As a beekeeper, then you got to think, okay, I know I can control mites. And maybe I put my hives away with mite levels that... I don't want to come out of the spring with. Uh, I don't think this is a treatment that's going to sit. Like if you're looking at high mite levels in the fall, a uh, winter treatment is going to be too late to do you any good. But if you say, I want to start off, <clears throat> I want to start off next year with the right numbers, then, uh, well, then I think you would, um, Take a look at putting something in the hive. It would be a pile of work for an operation like mine to essentially move every colony. And uh, most of us are jammed into our wintering spaces pretty tight. But I think, you know, if you had a forecast of, of some warm nights, put a few colonies outside, and then you can create a little bit of space to move things around a little bit, it could be done. Um, if you knew it was going to save your bees, you know, like... Uh, those numbers I reported you uh, earlier, you know, something like, four, you know, not quite 400 dead colonies. That's a crap load of money. Um, you know, it would be worth adding some space to your facility or, um, you know, blacking out the windows in your extracting room or whatever you needed to do to create a little bit of wiggle room for, your, for the space to get those treatments in. Okay, I'll leave it there. So this is the first report on the hives in the study. As you can see behind me, uh, they're looking okay. Now, there's some dead spaces, absolutely. And I will let uh, the scientists report on the, the, the details. I don't want to steal their thunder. But just as the observer, uh, I think it was a great experience to be part of that, to work with those folks to see how much more careful and exact uh, a serious scientist is than just some guy like me slapping something in to see if it works. Uh, they are measuring and, and, and detailing stuff that uh, we would just skate over. So uh, thanks for being, letting me be part of it. Thanks for your attention. Have a great day.